but I did notice that the lungs just, they, they just got progressively worse. And um, to the point that my brother, youngest brother, who's a medical doctor, didn't think I'd last like five years. Julia, thank you so much for joining me again. You're welcome. Um, so just uh, just to recap, you were um, you were interviewed on my channel about five months ago. Is that right? Uh, yeah, and, about four. Uh, yeah, just after I started, five? I think it was four months ago. I think it was about a month into carnivore. Okay. So, and I started in July seventeenth of this year, twenty twenty three. Awesome. So um, maybe if we could just do uh, a quick recap of what brought you to Carnivore, and then maybe we could talk about what has improved since the last time we spoke. Okay. One word, desperation. I was so tired of feeling like garbage. I have uh, full-blown emphysema, and the coughing fits were getting so debilitating that I I couldn't function anymore. I mean, I was barely able to do house chores, was really pushing to paint. That's what I do for, for a living. I'm an artist. And everything just became so heavy, and I was so sick of feeling like that. And um, I heard about carnivore through my son, Marty, who also has a channel called Bell Love Auto, Auto Spa. So shout out to Marty. He's a fantastic detailer. So I figure I'd put a plug in for you there. Um, and he talked about the lion diet and I looked it up and I realized that that was the most extreme form of carnivore. And then I started looking up carnivore in general and found Dr. Ken Berry and Dr. Chafee and, um, uh, Dr. Ben Bickman and, and others and your, your channel also, and just started really taking it all in. And I said, you know, this sounds about right for me. Because I have the type of body that's sensitive to everything. Um, I had done keto, really like a keto vor, since 2011 and successfully was able to keep off 50 pounds. But it was always a fight to keep that weight off. It was always like, you know, I was always battling like five or seven pounds all the time. And it was like keeping the carbohydrate monster at bay like the cravings, you know, fighting that. It, it, it did. It just felt like a huge war. And um, anyway, by the time I started carnivore, I was the emphysema symptoms have gotten worse. I could barely make it at the mailbox. I couldn't walk up the hill in my yard. I didn't feel like traveling anymore. That had been going on for about two years, still doing keto. And so I decided to give it a try. And in a very short time, the symptoms started to abate. Now, I also realized I needed to give up uh, my coffee because I have coffee with my cream. You know, that's how I was drinking it. So that had to go. And I noticed that the coughing right away when I did that, the violent, horrible coughing that I used to have just about went away. I still cough, but nothing like that. Um, after about Maybe, I'm going to say three months, three months into it. I mean, five months into it now, a little over. I was able to walk to the mailbox very briskly and back. And it's about maybe 100 yards each way and not have to stop. And one of the ways is uphill. And I didn't have to stop to catch my breath. So I noticed that the uh, the symptoms are starting to really really go down. And the other thing I noticed is I was able to make it all the way up to the top of my yard, uh, which is about 50 yards and a fairly steep hill without stopping. And I could look at my house and everything. It's really cool. I was going to try to get a picture for you of me up there, but it's there's been a lot of snow. <laughs> so I haven't been able to do that. Um, that's the biggest thing I think of all this. It, the rest, I mean, the, my skin, I haven't had a breakout on my face since I started carnivore. I have not had cracked heels. I used to get such painful cracked heels, it hurt to walk. Um, and I live in a very dry climate, and I was gooping on the cocoa butter and everything else and putting socks on and everything. and didn't do anything. And when I started carnivore, after about two weeks, I noticed, I was like, oh, my gosh, no more cracked heels, like that quickly. Uh, the vertigo went away. The tinnitus that I had for the most part went away. 
um, my sleep improved, even though I wake up like once in the night, but it's convenient so I can throw wood in my wood stove, you know, and then go back, I can go back to sleep. I have like, I guess what they call biphasic sleep because I feel very rested and everything. And I didn't used to, I used to always feel tired. Um, the anxiety that I had, which was like through the roof at times is gone. Um, I had pretty much with the ketovore solved the depression, which I had had lifelong. You know, that was the reason for starting the keto. But with carnivore, it really took it to the next level. And, um, you know, I am open to doing lion diet if I find that, <clears throat> you know, the the healing and recovery tend to level off. Um, I'm definitely open to doing that, you know, as a next step to see what happens. But I've tweaked it so that I don't do butter because I've noticed that butter, I get addicted to it like everything else and I gain weight, you know? So that's one of the things I need to stay away from. I can put a tiny bit in mixed with ghee, but generally I use um, duck fat or bacon fat. So I save the grease from the bacon and cook in that and it's great. Um, I pretty much eat now just, just beef. You know, I do all different cuts that are interesting, like ribeye, or I'll, I'll make uh, take some chuck and shave it real thin. I just invested in a nice meat cutter. So I do real, real thin slices of that and cook that up in the morning. I make beef jerky out of it so I can make beef chips. Um, occasionally, maybe once every 10 days or so, I'll eat fish, like cod, salmon, um, you know, more fatty fish. And, uh, but generally, yeah, I just stick to beef. I kind of lost the taste for chicken. Don't really like it that much. It's okay, but it's, you know, and, and I find that I think I get like a histamine reaction from it because I do notice when I eat it, my nose starts to run and stuff like that. So I like, eh, probably stay away. I do like duck. So shout out to Charger Mopar for that, Rick. <laughs> I love this stuff. Nice and fat, you know, and eat that right up. And, for Thanksgiving, that's what I had. Everybody else was eating the junk, and I had a, just a big old duck sitting on my plate. And mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it was so good. It's like, you want some? Nah, I said, good, more for me. <laughs> so that's been my journey so far. I'm actually feeling well enough to travel again. And uh, my children, I live in New Mexico, and my children live out east in uh, Maine and New Hampshire. And just the thought of dealing with Southwest Airlines. <laughs> it's like no yeah I, I couldn't even handle the even the thought of like lugging my suitcases which i travel light anyway to from the terminal to catch a cab or something or get an uber was just overwhelming you know i just couldn't even think of doing that because of you know the coughing and being out of breath so much and now it's like yeah i can totally handle that so i'm hoping that was one of my goals i'm hoping to travel in may and to go see the kids again. So they're real excited. Nice. You know, it's like, yes. And I, I think I can handle the the craziness of Southwest. You know, they like to play musical planes a lot. Yeah, you, know, you get on one, oh no, we have a malfunction. Okay, psych, you have to go back. Okay, no, no, this plane you can't no, no, can't go that way. You gotta go here. So, you know, your whole day is wasted just you know. <laughs> Anybody that's traveled knows what I'm talking about. It's so insane. But so in the <laughs> in the time in the time since we've spoken, um, how how has what what's the change with the emphysema as far as like did you last time we spoke would you have had the confidence to travel? That no, far? no, I was not ready at all. I just said maybe, but nah, just totally not ready. And also, I couldn't make it to the mailbox without stopping. And I totally couldn't climb up my the top of my yard at all, you know. Um, oh, and also I'm finding that like lifting 24 packs of water is fairly effortless now. You know, I actually work out. I have cats, so I work out with cat litter, you know, two 35-pound buckets, and I just lift those. And uh, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even carry one, you know, never mind lift them off the ground. I had to put everything on rollers to be able to, uh, and this is at the beginning. Uh, just to get it from one room to another. Now I can just pick it up and carry it, no problem. You know, um, it's it's wonderful to do that. So, um, I've recently been having more 
requests or comments on my videos talking about um, or asking for interviews with people who have um, got emphysema or COPD and things like that. And I always oh. refer them to your original video. Um, awesome. But would you mind talking a little bit about how did the emphysema develop? What was what what caused it? What was the uh, the the issue? Oh, I'm glad you asked because yeah, I think it started. Well, let me backtrack. Having lung issues and COPD is a result of growing a lot of times of growing up in a very unsure, violent environment. You know, you don't feel safe, and you're literally like this. So I had shortness of breath as a child, always getting throat infections and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I noticed like I couldn't run like the other kids without getting out of breath. So this was from a, when being very young, I never took asthma medication or anything. And I noticed it getting worse when I was in my 40s working in a factory where we, I was working next to a trichlor bin. Now, if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's a substance that's used as a degreaser. And it was a big open vat. And um, it's it's so toxic that even if you try to go clean the vat, you can die if you don't have respiration equipment on. So I was working next to that for a good eight years, maybe. A lot of people that had worked in that factory, once they retired, they died from respiratory stuff. So that's that's a piece of it. Um, growing up with secondhand smoke, I sure, I'm sure had a lot to do with it too. And when I was 17, I was a smoker, you know, I smoked a lot <clears throat> and I stopped smoking in 19, let's see, 1986. So I have not touched a cigarette since then. Um, just quit cold Turkey. So I think those factored all into it. Um, and I've, you know, since been very careful, I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't, I don't smoke. I don't do any medication of any kind and haven't ever. So my body, I think, has, fortunately, hasn't been damaged by inhalers and stuff like that, like with other people. Um, you know, so I've kind of got a head start, which is why I think I've had such good success with carnivore. I, um, I do acupuncture on a regular basis every other week, and that's mostly to treat you know, the, the COPD, which is, you know, emphysema is a form of COPD and to treat low back pain from coughing, you know, but it's really funny <laughs> as a quick aside. Now I go in there, it's like, do you have any aches and pains? Uh, well, not really. <laughs> Here I am at 64 years old. You know, I, I had my hands, if you can see, I, I broke this finger and these fingers would swell up all the time because I have a wood stove and then just shoving the wood in would cause like all kinds of carpal tunnel pain and everything else. And I just would put horse liniment on it and wrap it. I didn't take any medication or painkiller for it. But, I, you know, I live with that. Now it's like no pain, whatever. It's so awesome. Um, so, yeah, the emphysema, it, it's it's there you know, but it's nothing like it was. And I do believe that it can be healed. I think anything can, I mean, it, it, or at least, you know, so that the symptoms are maybe just a light cough or something like that. I won't, it won't totally hold me back in life where I can't travel. I can't paint. I can't, you know, where I can't do anything anymore. You know, I feel like I'm getting my life back because of this, this uh, way of life. It's, it's just amazing. So. The weight loss has been the secondary thing. Um, the battling with the food is a primary thing, but the weight loss, I lost 14 pounds from switching from ketovore to carnivore. So just for, as a reference, because a lot of people that I, I wish would do this, I'm five foot two. I weigh 100 pounds. And at my heaviest, I was 162 pounds when I started ketovore. So I kept 50 pounds or so, 45 to 50 pounds off. And then when I did carnivore, effortlessly like the weight just flew off i didn't even have to try which is like oh my god i'm disappearing like what's going on it was weird <laughs> it was really strange but it was great and it's leveled off at about between 100 and 102 i kind of level it at that um so 
God, I, I just, I'm, I'm just pinching myself sometimes. I can't believe how much better I feel overall, you know, and it's been decades, you know, just it, when I think of it, I, I, I have so much compassion for people now that, especially if they're real heavy, just listening to like the pain they've gone through and the lipidemia and the tumors. And, and it's, and I look around when I go food shopping and I just say, man, we sure live in a sick world. We sure, you know, look at all these people. And, and I used to judge people like, ah, they're just eating crap, you know. That, But no, it's, they, it, it's, it's so much bigger than that. They're addicted and maybe don't even know it, you know. I mean, if you're addicted to food and you can't stop eating, this, this is the cure, I'm telling you. This, this will totally stop the cravings. That's the biggest monkey off my back ever. I mean, right. it's, in, oh, God. It, you know, it's always like fighting the food. That's what I felt like. It's, it's a monster. <laughs> you know, every friggin' day. And just not to have that. And if I do get a even a thought about it, I can go eat a piece of bacon and I'm good, you know? So, and I'm not going to go off in a big binge. And now I watch people just, I, I just shake my head. I have a neighbor, for example. It's a sweetheart of a guy. He's only 50 or maybe 51 and he's got like bone on bone joint pain he's a type 1 diabetic he he has battled with like drugs and everything and he's in so much pain he finally got off all the drugs which I'm so happy for him he stopped stopped using all that stuff the medication but he's in agony i said i said ray i said try this i said just try it for 30 days man i said you got nothing to freaking lose beef butter bacon and eggs and eat all you want I said, I guarantee you, you'll start feeling better. So I'm waiting to hear back from him and see what happens. I won't probably won't see him till Friday, but mm. I'm crossing my fingers, you know, just hoping that he'll give it a shot because I hate watching people suffer. Yeah, I just do. But you can't tell people about it unless they're ready to hear it. And I think my neighbor hit bottom enough where he, you know, he like me, he was desperate. So I said, yeah. all right, I will. I'll try it. I will. You know, like I, that. I think I think that's part of the reason we are able to talk to people who have had such big changes. And yes. it, it's because you've almost got to get to the point where you're you're at rock bottom before before this makes sense. And then well, you've once got you nowhere to go but up. It, yeah. Then once you start doing it, then you realize it was so simple. <laughs> I could have done this anytime. But you know, it's Here's the thing, you you know, if you're not at that point, you, you actually are really think that you're giving something up. Um, there's, there's a great video that just came out by my friend, um, Old Guy Carnivore, that he calls it the carnivore test. He's got it written out. You know, are you addicted to food? And man, it's spot on. And, um, you know, one of the things I think in, is recognizing that you're an addict. You've got it. It's like, I have no control over this. So I've got to find a way, you know, and, and it's, it, it, it basically, it's got, it, it, you've got to recognize that it has you by the throat until you're ready that, to do something about it. That, that's a really good point, you know, because people who are food addicts, like just your average citizen, you know, we kind of maybe would look down on someone who's a drug addict or something like that. But it's actually, right. it's the same thing. It's identical. Think about it. If you listen to Ben Bickman's videos, he talks about how sugar attacks the mitochondria in your body the same way that methamphetamines do. Is that a drug or what? Hello? I mean... It, it's really strange when you start this way of life, you start looking at the world a little differently, I think. And here we are in the holidays. And I mean, I'm all about, you know, getting together with family and talking to my kids. I love my kids and my family, but the freaking food, it's a big sugar fest. That's all it is. It's like candy canes and cake. And it's like, I, I'm not even tempted by it because to me, when I eat that stuff, Eating my gun looks like a really good idea, you know? I mean, it's that bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> it really, um, it's like, on, no thanks. St still on that kind of um, the addict theme, um, 
I wonder, can you imagine a situation? Let's imagine sugar had never been discovered. And Wouldn't that be awesome? Like it, all of a sudden someone discovered sugar like a year ago. Do you think governments would treat it the same way as they have done? Like if it was a new discovery, they would probably look at it and go, hang on, this is a drug of addiction. No one's making money off this. We can't let this. Oh, they, no. Let this public. But you know? when they find a way to make money on it, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, yeah. we can make money. Yeah. And then they can get it in the, you know, get it in the food supply like they've done, you know. I mean, I can, yeah. I don't want to go there because I don't want to get you uh, black dots on YouTube, but <laughs> I think you know where I'm really? coming from with that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, so, gosh. How this is a big change for your whole family, I imagine. So you you talked about how your kids are living in other states, like just making a phone call or doing a FaceTime or something with your kids now compared to, you know, what it was like five years ago. It must be chalk and cheese. Like oh just yes, you haven't got the emphysema because I'm not coughing all the time. They are tickled to death. They're so happy for me, and they're so happy that I'm going to come out in May. You know that I'm definitively going to do that. That they they're so supportive. I said, I said, yeah, just throw a ribeye at me. I'm good. I'm easy. <laughs> and <laughs> you need well, to go. I, on that point, actually, how how do they feel about this? Um, I mean, I guess your son got you onto it, but what what about your daughter? How is she? Well, I've got two boys and a girl. So my oldest boy, he's watched me do keto over the years, and he's tried it himself. And he's tried, like, kind of dabbled in the carnivore. He just hasn't hit the bottom yet, but he knows the difference. So he's 100% supportive. My daughter just sees the the improvement, you know, the fact that I can, she's a physical therapist. So the fact that I can walk to the top of a hill, walk to the mailbox, I'm willing to travel now and deal with south, Southwest charades, you know, um, she's, she's tickled to death. My youngest son, the one that told me about it, he tried it because he, he tried the most extreme form. And he got so exhausted and sick that he quit, you know, but, um. He he supports me because he sees how much better I'm doing when I'm talking, that I'm not always coughing like I was and stuff. So they're they're a hundred percent on board, you know. And I'm hoping someday they'll try it or at least try some form of keto, you know, because I think it's the proper human diet, like Ken Berry says. You know, it's it's the way that we need to be eating, or at least at least whole foods and stay, you know, basically shop the perimeter of the store and stay away from the middle, and you'll do okay. You know, even if you happen to eat vegetables, if you're eating whole food, I'm all about that. So day to day, um, obviously, you know, in the work you're doing with your painting and stuff like that, the the improvement with the emphysema has has obviously helped in that regard. Oh, oh um, yes. What what other things on a kind of a, a a practical level have changed for you day to day? What's easier to do or what's quicker to do? Everything, everything, just not having to force myself. I'm a very disciplined person. So if my house needs cleaning, I don't, you know, I'm Italian too. So I don't care how bad it is. You know, I've got to, I've got to wash that floor. I'll make myself do it. If I'm dying, because, you know, you never know who's going to come over and think you're a slob. <laughs> so it's the programming, you know, no, but honestly, like, for example, just sitting doing a painting, it still happens every now and then, but but I would start painting and then the coughing fit would come and I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. I had to wait and then I'd be real tired from that. Just having that stop for the most part, I can, I've, now I've got like three paintings going um, where maybe I could do one every six months before that and I had to really push myself. Um, cleaning. It's easy. The big thing I noticed, like, um, it's winter now here. So taking wood in the house, I have a big wood pile, which I stack myself. Um, you know, I, I, I here they sell it by the truckload. So I get two pallets and I, I stack like about maybe four to five truckloads of wood for the, for the winter. And just being able to go out there, load my arms up, open the door, bring it in, put it in the, in the rack. 
load the stove. I mean, it's like no big deal. Before it was just like exhausting. And I make myself do it because I didn't want to stop moving. You know, I wanted to just keep myself going because my daughter always told me, even if you do a little bit of effort, even if you have emphysema, just getting your heart going is really good for you. And now it's it's so effortless to do that. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else. It, having to go to the store, just uh, that was a exhausting. Just thinking about getting in my car, driving the car. I mean, we live a good maybe 15 miles from the local grocery store. And then having to lift litter boxes into the trunk or racks of water. Oh, my God. And, and I used to dread, like, oh, I hope I can find someone that can help me load this in the cart, you know. So, and I was always fortunate. People are so nice out here in New Mexico. They're always willing to help you. You know, they're, they're really, really sweet. But now I can do it myself. And um, matter of fact, I remember one day I, I had, I met, that's where you meet everybody is at the local Walmart. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a small town. And my, my friends were there one guy that fixes my computer and and I said look I said I can do this now and I was loading the cat litter into the into the cart and he was like oh my gosh wow I said yeah to try it and I said I'm doing carnivore diet that's all I said because they he and his wife had struggled with food and they're both morbidly obese you know but I left it at that <laughs> I said look what I can do now you know so power of example I think is it speaks for itself um, I'm just thinking of other things. Oh, taking care of the yard in the summertime. So in July, maybe two or three weeks after I started carnivore, I was able to weed whack that whole yard. I had trend bushes. I was able to, uh, I hadn't been able to get, my partner usually would do it for me. And uh, he got real busy because he works, you know, for a, another guy. And uh, the grass was getting kind of shaggy. So I, I was able to, it's electric, you know, it's a little bit more lightweight. But I weed whacked that baby. I was like, shh, no problem. You know, I had that yard. He was shocked. <laughs> so that, that, all that kind of stuff I can do now. So um, this interview that we're doing now, if if you were, if you were doing this interview six years ago, seven years ago, I mean, what would it be like for you? I mean, I, I guess you'd be constantly interrupted by coughing and stuff, but like, what is the, what's the duration and what's the kind of recovery time you would need for something like a coughing? I don't, you know, I don't know. I would say that it's in the last three years that the symptoms have gotten really bad because six years ago, I had a full-fledged pottery business and I was doing historical reproduction and I was able to, you know, lift stuff. And I mean, I had the coughing, but it wasn't debilitating. It happened. I think it started getting worse after my late husband passed away in 2017. And then say about maybe right around the COVID time, then it really started getting bad. Not because I had COVID, but just, it just, that's when it really started to hit. So six years ago, I would have been okay. Oh, Still have okay. things on rollers, but but yeah. I'm doing better in many ways now than even then, because yeah. I'm finding that I I can lift things more easily. I, I don't get as mm. tired. I don't have to like ration my energy like I used to. Mm. You know, mm. so, That's the so apo apologies, my timeline was no a worries. Bit off there. So like uh, maybe if you could contrast like three years ago to now, like what what would okay. it be like trying to have a conversation like this? Um, as long as I was sitting down and I had ice water with me, I'd be okay. But I would have to sometimes stop to clear my lungs and cough during the conversation. So that's what it would have been like. Um, if I had to physically do something, that's another story. You know, that would have been really hard. Like if so, I had to get so up and. It, it, it uh, mainly was the biggest issue when anything physical was involved. Yes, exactly. Right. Like, like taking care of my yard stacking wood, bringing it in, um, grocery shopping, um, you know, just anything heavy. You know, it's it's one of the main reasons I let the pottery business go because after uh, Dino died, it got to be too much for me physically to do it. I was making some pretty giant pots and stuff like that. I just just couldn't handle it. Even, even um, just wedging the clay to get the air out of it was tiring. I, 
I, I think a lot of that at the time was grieving too, because I mean, I didn't know whether I was coming or going, but I did notice that the lungs just, they, they just got progressively worse. And um, to the point that my brother, youngest brother, who's a medical doctor, didn't think I'd last like five years. You know, it, it was bad. It was pretty bad, you know, as far as just physically being able to do things. So that's the most massive change. And talking without having to cough every five minutes. You know, not having that scratchy tickle. That's huge. And has your has your doctor brother got any feeling about this? Is he like He's on board a hundred percent. He's so happy for me and he encourages me. Um, you know, he's he's also one he's very awake. You know, he's not mainstream. My my brother's very much kind of broken the mold. He's had a, his own awakening, I'd say, about two years ago, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, <clears throat> wouldn't be surprised if one of these days he'll be making YouTube videos too. But he's uh, he sees the change. He sees the improvement. He see even the anxiety level. I mean, just my overall being. You know, he he see me get so much better, a hundred percent. And so he's he's a hundred percent behind me with it so i'm very fortunate that i have a lot of support from family julia can you talk a little bit about uh your your painting and um how people can find you whether that's your website or youtube or anywhere they can find me on youtube at uh venetian cat fine art where i just have a couple of videos up of some old pottery that i used to do the type of work but now i'm doing um Full time doing painting. So I do photographic realism and I can do anything from landscapes to portraits. And the website is venetiancat.com and spelled just like it is, uh, but all one, one word, venetiancat.com. And you can see all my artwork on that. So, you know, I can take commissions or anything else, or, or you know, if you want to just shoot me an email and talk about carnivore. I'm more than happy to discuss emphysema and and um, dealing with it because, man, I'll tell you, it's just just not to not to have doctors throw inhalers at you, which I don't take anyway. Um, I think I've even got my acupuncturist kind of baffled. He's he just like, you, you know, he's kind of he's he's an acupuncturist, but he's kind of mainstream in a way. And he's just like kind of scratching his head going, that's all you eat is meat. And like, yeah. It's like, um, well, I guess it's working because he feels my pulses and stuff like that. And he said, you, you've improved so much, you know, and he, like he can't he can't wrap his mind around it. <laughs> I just laugh. But he's a wonderful guy. And, he, and it's it really has helped. Um, so, yeah, that's how to find me. Any questions? I'm more than happy to talk to talk to people. You want to do a Zoom chat with me sometime? Just email me. Uh, that's that would be info at venetiancat.com. So if you want to email me, I'm, I'm happy to talk to anybody about this because I'll tell you what, it's given me a lease on life, a new lease on life. It really has. I mean, I, I'm 64 and I thought, well, you know, if I live to be 70, I'm lucky. Now I'm looking forward to life. I'm going, yeah, yeah, I could live to be 80. You know, I'm, I'm good. But, you know, just looking, yeah. I can live again. I'm living again, which is just awesome. You know, there's no price on that. That so, seems to be a common theme with carnivores. Yeah. It looks a whole lot different once you start eating this way. That carnivore glow, man, I'm telling you. Yeah, it, it's it's what, you know, it just it affects everything. I mean, it just permeates every aspect of your life. Just like when you eat badly or you're addicted to something, it, it affects every area of your life as well, you know. And uh, I really think it. the more people get this, it's this wonderful ripple effect because you don't even realize who you're affecting. People see you and it just, I think it just, the vibes can attract, you know, it's, it's, it's attraction, not promotion. They say that in other 12 step programs too. Um, Cause I've been addicted to all kinds of other things, which thank God one day at a time, I'm not anymore. Um, but it's, you, you become a power of example and, you know, people, I think if they're desperate enough, like my neighbor, they're going to want to give it a shot, you know, because he saw how sick I was. He's known me since I've lived here, which is 13 years. And he sees the difference from then and now. So he's like, wow, <laughs> I got to try that myself, you know. 
My yeah. partner's the one that I'd love to get on board with it because he's in poor guy's got horrendous inflammation from just pain in his arms. It, it, you know, just bad diet and alcohol is not helping. But I just leave him alone. You know, he'll he'll find his own way, his himself. I mean, me nagging him isn't gonna do any good. Didn't do me any good. Yeah. You know, everyone will get there once they're ready, right? Yeah, in their own if they're ready, in their own way, you know. Unfortunately, some people they don't. It's just like Sean Baker was saying, um, look how many amputations that he's done for people that were diabetic. And they thanked him for removing the limb. Ah, now I feel better. And they went back to eating the same stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, my head, you know, poor people. And, and they and I see people do that with alcohol, drugs, everything else. So who's to say, you know, but if I could make a difference with just one life, one person someday, you know, I'm, I'm good with that too. That's why I do these interviews, hopefully, to, just to, you know, someone will listen to it and hear what they need to hear, hopefully. And I really appreciate what you're doing. I, I've loved the guests you've had, man. You've had some wonderful people it, it, that inspire me to keep going, too. So thank you. Cheers. Well, cheers, Dave. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing uh, sharing an update and, and talking more about your story with us, Julia. Thank you, you bet. so much.